officially mock draft 3.0 if you can't tell we're switching stuff up a little bit we're going ugly mugless this time in other words my face isn't going to be on it the hope here is without having to memorize everything i can kind of take my time do the pre-recording get some more details with these picks uh before we get into it i do have a patreon if you would be interested in supporting that would be fantastical link is or at least should be in the description hopefully i didn't mess that up most importantly, however, NFLBigBoard.com. That's the board that I'm using right now to make all these mock drafts. It's the board that I would encourage you to use for those that don't know. Uh, it is an aggregator from all the um, all the boards around the NFL. So, you know, pretty much everything that you've heard of and a few that you probably haven't. All those aggregated into one big board. Got about 400 prospects. The table is sortable, so you can look based on last name. You can sort by position which I try to do my best to make sure that the positions make sense, right? Defensive tackle, edge, linebacker means inside, not outside linebacker. That doesn't make sense because sometimes that means pass rusher. Sometimes that means linebacker, linebacker, and those are two very different positions. So defensive tackle, edge, linebacker, corner, safety. And I did split between free safety and strong safety, which isn't exactly an exact science, but I did my best. I actually went to look at every single roster of everybody that was a safety to try to decipher whether it is a free safety or a strong safety. And of course you can sort by school as well. Um, then if you continue on through there you can see we've got uh, highlights. You can click on film. It takes you to YouTube, shows you some of their film. Uh, news will show you the most recent news based on that player. Um, if you click on report, I'm trying to get my own going. I'm working on it but as of right now I'm using the draft network and their draft reports. They do a really good job so I figure since they do a thorough job and have a ton of prospects and I want to be able to cover a lot of people, I went with them for now. To the right of that, you see AVG, which is just average. Basically, this is just their average draft position. So if you look at uh, Nick Bosa right at the top 1.3, it just means on average he's going or is, is ranked 1.3 on, on big boards. So in other words, basically he's number one on most boards, one or two. I like including it because it kind of shows you if you want to do a mock draft, you can kind of do tiers. You know what I mean? If you look at it, Nick Bosa is 1.3, Ed Oliver is 3.7. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a, a drop off there. But then you got Ed Oliver and Quinn and Williams that are kind of in a tier. And then there's a massive drop off where you've got Jonah Williams, Greedy Williams, Cleveland Farrell, um, Jeffrey Simmons, Deontay Thompson, Devin White. I mean, they're all right in that category. So you kind of got another tier. So it just kind of adds that. And then just recently I added this little plus minus thing here. All that is is uh, risers and fallers, risers, sliders, whatever you want to call it. So you can kind of see the, the movement that we've had over some of these guys. Not a ton for some of the guys that are really high up, but as you kind of move your way down, you can see Dexter Lawrence dropped three. That might have something to do with some of his drug stuff. Dwayne Haskins obviously is flying up. He's not as high as he probably will be, but, um, you know, whatever. He's moved up five recently. So anyways, just wanted to give you a little introduction. I would encourage you to use that as much as possible. Uh, it's the second year that I've had the site, but really, it's the the first year was just kind of a run through. It wasn't very good. Uh, this year, I'm 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 pretty proud of what we're doing. So, anyways, let's get started with the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. The Arizona Cardinals select Nick Bosa, edge rusher, Ohio State. Now, the temptation to trade back is is really really strong. Obviously, the Cardinals could use quite a bit of help. I'll probably end up doing that at some point or another trying to, you know, do different stuff. But just, I, I, I think when it comes down to it, you just don't want to overthink this. I don't want two tens. I want Bosa. He's the guy that everybody wants and almost nobody has. He's going to be our, you know, Joey Bosa. He's going to be our Khalil Mack. He's going to be our Von Miller. Not saying he's necessarily going to be that good. But I mean, th this is this is the guy everybody wants. Next to an, an elite quarterback, everybody wants this guy. We have an opportunity. Why are we going to trade it away? Why? So we can get Jonah Williams and Deontay Thompson or something? It just, I, I no, no. I I want the freak among freaks, and that's uh, Nick Bosa. The only real knock that we've got here is that he was injured. He only ended up playing three games. However, in those three games, he had four sacks. In 29 games throughout his college career, he's got 17.5 sacks. That's a pretty incredible number. 29 tackles for a loss, 77 tackles, two pass deflections. I mean, he he's he's just, he belongs in the NFL. He doesn't belong in college. It's just not fair. 6'3", 270 pounds. You can put him at 4'3", 3'4". It doesn't matter. The guy's just bigger, stronger, faster than everybody else. Okay, not literally, but I mean, he's, he's just, he's, he's a dominant football player. He's a can't-miss prospect. Just draft him. That's what we're going to do. 
With the second overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Cleland Farrell, edge rusher, Clemson. Now, I'm going to be honest, I absolutely hate this pick. <laughs> I hate this so I hate that the 49ers traded, or didn't trade, they, they lost their number one overall spot. Because all you guys convinced me 100% that Nick Bosa would be a great fit for the 49ers. I was ready to give him that pick. Done deal. Ready to go. I don't know what to do now. I really wanted to trade. I couldn't find anybody. I went through every single team. Who wants to move? Nobody wants to move up to this spot. Quinn and Williams and Ed Oliver are the top guys, but there's so many defensive tackles. Why am I moving up to get one? And nobody needs one. In, in the top 10 or so, there's very few teams that need a defensive tackle. And if you need one, why are you trading up to two? Let them fall to you. There's going to be a billion of them. You could trade back and get a defensive tackle. Do I want to trade up to two to get Jonah Williams? No. I'm, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm not trading up to get anybody. The, the intelligent thing would probably be for the 49ers to just take the best available, which is either Quinn and Williams or Ed, or Ed Oliver. The fact of the matter is, though, I would get absolutely annihilated in the comments. I'm going to anyways. But I, I just, I can't do it. It's not, it doesn't make sense. The next two highest guys on my board, not named Jonah Williams because I don't want an offensive tackle, are Greedy Williams and Cleland Farrell. I'm really not a huge fan of Cleland. I don't think he's a great value at number two. But 49ers fans, from what I've seen in the comments section, oh, by the way, I completely forgot and I'm really upset. Hopefully you guys aren't just skipping around. Leave a comment with your team's or any comment you have about any team, it doesn't matter, but put the team name in the comment. Because when I do this mock draft, I go back into the comments and I type in the team name to see what people have been saying. I do take your comments pretty seriously, so for sure, if you want to comment on the 49ers, type in 49ers and then leave your comment. And I'm going to, as you'll see in this mock, you're going to see that I've, I've, I do take that into consideration. But 49ers fans want an edge rusher, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull the trigger. You know, with this move, we're going to put Solomon inside. Um... With Buckner, this is going to give us a pretty solid interior. Then on the outside now, we got Armstead and uh, Furl, I guess is how you're supposed to say it, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Cleland Furl. So Armstead, Buckner, Solomon Thomas, Cleland Furl. Those are our guys. Again, I, I don't want this, man. I wanted to trade out of this. I just, nobody wants the spot. So anyways, it is what it is. Cleland, six five, uh, 260 pounds. So real good build, 11 and a half sacks this past year for Clemson. Again, he, he's he's not my favorite prospect, but you can't really deny um, the production. And, and for a relatively solid program, well, I, I don't mean relatively solid. Clemson's amazing, but the ACC is not exactly the SEC. Obviously, they're a solid program. They won the national title. Still, 11.5 sacks for Clemson is very, very impressive. With the third overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. Six foot five, 300 pounds. At this point in time, far and away the best tackle in the class. If you're looking for one and you want a, you know, a top guy, this is pretty much your only shot. Considering the Jets and how they are, and they've, they've got several needs on both sides of the ball, but we got to get this offense going. And there's nothing that I like about this offense. I mean, literally nothing. We've got a very young quarterback with all the potential in the world. we got Gase on board. Hopefully he can help him out. But there's only so much that Darnold and Gase can do without anything around him. He, he, I mean, literally. There, there isn't a single offensive lineman that I like. There, there's no talented receivers, including tight ends, three of whom, by the way, are free agents this year. Receivers, that is. His running back is Isaiah Crowell. I, I, I don't know what the Jets can do. But whatever. We got to start building somewhere, somehow. We're going to start by protecting him. As the draft rolls along, we'll start adding what we can. We've got a ton of uh, cap space, so we're going to do what we can in free agency. We're going to do what we can in the draft. We're going to build around Sam Darnold, and we're going to get this thing fixed. And we have to in a hurry, because if you've been watching my videos, you know one of the things that I constantly stress is do not draft a guy to a garbage team that's just going to get annihilated, lose his confidence, and then be Mark Sanchez or every other Jets quarterback since forever. I don't know why it's so hard for teams to realize maybe we should try to get a couple things in place and then draft a quarterback like the Giants. Giants have some stuff, man. They got some serious weapons everywhere. You plop a talented quarterback in the middle of it, he's got all the tools in the world to make this thing work. But whatever, we're not talking Giants, we're talking Jets. We did what we did, we had a guy, we pulled the trigger, now we got to make it right. So, Jonah Williams, 
tackle Alabama to the Jets. With the fourth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Quinn and Williams defensive tackle Alabama. First of all, phenomenal value. I think it's relatively consensus. I know NFLBigBoard.com um, has Ed Oliver number two, but you can just tell by the tone and tenor of how things are going. Quinn is, is definitely number two. Some people even have him at number one. That's happening more and more. I don't necessarily think he's going to get drafted number one because Nick Bosa is an edge rusher just by virtue of the position. But whoever the team is taking Quinn and Williams at number four, you can't be upset. However, I drafted some defensive tackles for the Raiders in the last mock, and everybody hated it. So let me just point out a couple things. First, there are only three top five players on my board, as I pointed out. Outside of Nick Bosa, it's Quinn and Williams and Ed Oliver. So again, value-wise, they should have never made it this far. Secondly, I love you guys over there in, in, in Raiders fandom land, but you guys need to cool it with Maurice Hurst and P.J. Hill. All right, first of all, Maurice Hurst was talked about in a similar way that Ed Oliver was. He fell because of non-football related issues. His production was pretty good, but I mean, come on, man. It's not that good. And P.J. Hall, come on. According to Pro Football Focus, Maurice Hurst was the 45th best defensive tackle. Hall was the 79th. Let's just calm down a little bit. Third of all, Hankins, McDonald, and Rubin, all free agents this year. Defensive tackle is not our biggest need, but we need more bodies, we need more talent, and Quinnen Williams is an elite prospect, the best one on the board by far. No person on this planet watching this video should be upset about the Raiders getting Quinnen Williams at four. End of lecture. For those that uh, haven't seen, by the way, head over to NFLBigBoard.com, check out some of his highlights, watch some of his film. The guy's an absolute monster, 6'3", 285. Just, I mean, he just, he's just bigger and better than everybody. And I, I love watching those guys. You know, it, it makes it easy for me, as I've said several times. I'm not a scout. That's not what I do. So for me, it's so nice when I don't have to try hard to find out why they're good or how they're good. You just watch it and go, this isn't even fair, man. It's, it's like playing a game with cheat codes. It's, is it fun? Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch. Is it fair? No. But I enjoy it. So anyways, guaranteed home run with Quinn and Williams. With the fifth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. So this one's relatively simple for me. Ed Oliver is a better football player, but defensive tackle is one of the few positions the Bucs have that I kind of like. The Bucs get absolutely obliterated through the air. They've got a new defensive coordinator in Todd Bowles. That's cool. But if you think Todd Bowles has a good history of stopping people of, of, you know, attacking them through the air, you're mistaken. Go back and look at his track record. Not saying it's impossible, especially considering the talent, but don't assume that, hey, we got Todd Bowles, the guy's got a really good track record, we'll be fine. No, you got no talent. Todd Bowles has never proven to be able to stop anything as far as, you know, people throwing through the air. I don't know what exactly he does do well, but it isn't stopping passing offenses. Now, I will say Greedy Williams is one of those guys, and one, one thing I'm learning as I'm doing this more and more, so many people scout with their eyes, and I'm not even talking about watching film. I'm just talking about they look at stats, they look at height, they look at weight, and they go, that's my guy. I, I love Brian Burns. You know why? Because I watched Brian Burns, and the guy's a freak, and I was like, this guy is really good. I don't know why he's so far, you know, back in the first round. I threw that up on Twitter, and I just got lit up. He's 230 pounds. He's too small. Now, maybe that's true, but the obsession with the, the height and weight and everything else is just, it's a little out of control, and I think those are the kinds of things that change over time. Bottom line is, for whatever reason, because he's not that big, Greedy Williams just seems to be built like an NFL corner, and people like that. However, you start listening to people who are watching film and they're saying, I have no idea why Greedy Williams is, is given so much praise other than he's built like an NFL corner. 6'1", 182, again, whatever. But long story short, I'm sticking to my board. I'm taking Greedy Williams as our top corner, but I would expect as we get closer to the draft, Greedy's going to be falling. You're going to see some of the other guys start to move up in the draft. That's just a prediction. It's neither here nor there. Greedy Williams is my pick. Bottom line is, like a lot of teams, you got to have at least a number one corner. You got to have that guy that can match up against a number one wide receiver. If you don't have it, you're going to struggle. 
It seems like a little bit of a reach, and according to some people, the, the draft class isn't that great for corners, but again, I'm just sticking to my board. I'm not. I'm tuning all that stuff out. But if, if he is as good as he is, this is, this is a no-brainer. Cornerback, number one outside boundary lockdown cornerback is one of the most important positions in the NFL. We're going to assume we got it, and we're going to go out and get it right now. Greedy Williams to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With the sixth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. So as I just said very recently, um, the Giants are in a really, really good situation, something that's pretty rare for a team that's drafting really high in the draft and a team that needs a quarterback to have this much already built around him to have the wide receivers he has, to have the running back he has, to have the tight end that he has. Dwayne Haskins at 6'2", 214 pounds, is coming into about as good a situation as you can find for a guy that's nearly top five. Now, I will say that this is a massive reach, but if you're not reaching, you're not trying. We're talking about quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, there's already been talk about the Miami Dolphins maybe waiting until next year, and I think there's a good amount of teams. You could look at uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can look at a lot of other teams that maybe would have that same strategy. Now, there's second-round guys that will probably take a flyer on, but some teams, maybe the Raiders even, guys that have quarterbacks that aren't long-term solutions, the Bucks, but they have quarterbacks that can compete, just maybe isn't my guy. You know, Bruce Arians wants his guy. Gruden wants his guy. They might be looking at 2020. The Giants... I think they're built for now. We still got some work to do. We got a few more pieces. We got a few more holes. We need to work on that defense a little bit. But just get your guy, man. So I I, I think based on the performance of this team in the second half of the season, as good as Dallas has performed and as as good as the Eagles kind of came on, I I think the Giants could be right back into the mix. It's going to depend on, obviously, how well Haskins can do in the system, how well can the coaches optimize his skill sets, And what can the defense do? But I I will say this. If if the Giants can maximize just the potential that's on this team, they probably should have the best offense in the NFC East. I'll leave it at that. With the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to trade. That's right. We got trades in this one. They're going to trade with the Green Bay Packers. Jaguars were, and, and just so we're clear, when I do trades, I don't look at teams that want to move up. I couldn't care less. If I'm if I'm picking for a team, I take the player I want. If I don't have a player I want, then I start looking for a team to trade with. So as the Jaguars, I wasn't super thrilled with the board as it stacked up. So I'm going to call, take some phone calls. I'm going to get a third and a fourth from the Green Bay Packers. I'm going to move back to pick 12. Packers move up to pick seven. So with the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. So first of all, this is something that just kind of has to happen. right? Ed Oliver is the second best player on our board. We're at pick seven. Jaguars are looking at it going, no, nah, I don't really want a defensive tackle. Packers are just chomping at the bit. Now, I, I've done this once before where I, I tried to use the Packers' two first-round picks to move up, but it's, it's just too much for Ed Oliver. But at this point, moving from 12 to 7, giving up a third and a fourth, the Packers have an additional fourth, so really they're giving up a third. They still have a fourth. Um, You know, Packer fans really want an edge rusher. We really need an edge rusher. But Ed Oliver will provide that pass rush from the inside. Now, the, the defensive tackles on this team are actually pretty solid. But this is going to create a trio of guys where you've got Mike Daniels on one side, who is a very good player, a, a relatively good pass rusher, but also good against the run. Kenny Clark, incredible nose tackle. He's really taken off the last couple of years. And now you get Ed Oliver, who is just an absolute dynamo at getting up the field. The ability to create pressure is going to be created from the inside. You look at what the Rams do. The Rams can get pressure. They have the worst linebackers ever. So we're we're, we're neglecting a need and taking a position that's one of the few strengths that the Packers really do have. But it does provide a need, which is generating pressure on the quarterback, which is something the Packers have struggled with for some time. Ed Oliver, six foot two, two hundred and eighty pounds, um, only had three sacks this past year in eight games. Uh, really, he hasn't had double-digit sacks, which you know he's defensive tackle. But still, considering the hype, uh, five and a half sacks in 2017 in 12 games, five sacks in 12 games in 2016. But really, one of the things with with Ed Oliver is just that he is one of those physically gifted people where 
Based on his size, he should not be able to do the things he does. Assuming he does go into the combine, he's going to blow out everybody. He's, he, I mean, it just, it's, it's unbelievable what he can do with his body. The speed that he has for his size, the, the, the get off, everything about him is just absolutely freakish. So you, you kind of hope to get a little bit better than three sacks, even in eight games. You know, if, if I'm looking at a 12 game season, I'd, I'd kind of like a little closer to like eight or nine ish instead of the five that we've been getting from them. But, you know, it's still one of those things you lick your chops at. And, uh, you know, again, a team like the Packers, who the one thing they do well is develop defensive tackle talent, they can do a lot with him. So, Ed Oliver to the Green Bay Packers. Next up, with the eighth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. So this is one of about three different corners that, there's some dispute about as far as who the top guy is um late in december he was actually the the advisory committee actually gave him a second round grade but um he's he's been uh pretty consistent as far as his abilities in college coming out of a great program and uh consensus around the nfl is that or excuse me around the the mock drafty big boardy areas that he is a a mid first round guy six feet tall 175 um you know nothing wrong with that Came away with four interceptions on the year last year with 14 games. 13 pass deflections, which is just an incredible number. Basically won a game. But, you know, the Lions need a good amount of stuff. And I one of the things that they are going to need, similar to what I said about the Bucks, they got to get that lockdown corner. I, I, don't, I don't even know if I want to call them a lockdown. You just got to get somebody that can match up. Whether we're talking about Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, you know, you, you, in the NFC North, these, these are the guys you got to go up against twice a year. The Lions can't match up against any of these guys. And Allen Robinson isn't even necessarily top tier, but still, the Lions don't have anybody that can match up with Allen Robinson. That defense is going to need a lot of help. I wish I could have given you an edge rusher. There's just nobody that I really like. I know there's some names that you're looking at, but again, I'm sticking to my board. Byron Murphy is a much better value. And again, very, 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 very critical position. This is, this is a passing league. If you can't stop other teams from carving you up, you can't win. So we're, we're going to take a swing at it. Byron Murphy, cornerback out of Washington. Next up, with the ninth overall pick, the Buffalo Bills are going to give us a second trade of the evening. The Cleveland Browns are going to trade up and offer a second round pick, moving from pick 17 to pick 9. So with the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select... Jeffrey Simmons, defensive tackle, Mississippi State. So obviously, like I said, with the way the trades go, the Bills just not really comfortable with this spot. The Browns have got a pretty decent team. They, they obviously have done a lot of turnover with, with their coaching staff, and they've had a lot of good draft picks. The offense is really starting to click. But the fact of the matter is, and I've been saying this for, I mean, since last year, the interior is not all that great. I got a decent amount of pushback on that, but the defensive tackles in particular not a whole lot to love. Jeffrey Simmons is one of my favorite guys as far as being underrated. And I, I shouldn't say he's underrated because he's not on my board, but you just, you don't hear his name. I love what, go watch him play. Again, hopefully you're following along. Go click on the little highlight button next to Jeffrey Simmons. You should do, you know what? If you're not doing that, go do that. Go to NFL Big Board as I make the selection, click on a highlight and just watch the guy play as I talk. Just a suggestion. I think it sounds fun. And no, I can't put it on mine for two reasons. One, it's a ridiculous amount of work. And two, it would demonetize my video, and it's just not worth it for that. But Jeffrey Simmons is an absolute stud. He's a monster human being. Six foot three, 301 pounds. Only had two sacks. He, you know, I'm not going to say he's not a get-up-the-field disruptor because he had 18 tackles for a loss. Why the production for him getting to the quarterback was so low, I'm not entirely sure. But he can get up the field for sure and wreak some havoc. 63 total tackles. I mean, he, he's just a wrecking ball. So he's very, very big. He's very, very violent. And I think if his sack numbers were a little higher, maybe you'd be hearing more about him, and that's probably the biggest problem. But I'm, I'm telling you, go watch him play. I don't know why he's not getting more sacks, because he can get in the backfield no problem. But uh, very, very hard to block guy. Very, very big, very strong, and he's going to be a huge addition to this uh, this Cleveland Browns team. Next up, with the 10th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select... Deontay Thompson, safety, Alabama. So obviously I would love to get some offensive help here, but um, best of luck to you in this draft, at least in the first round. 
With that said, however, our secondary, not incredibly fantastic. And considering what Vic Fangio, the new head coach of the uh, Denver Broncos, has done, considering what he did with the Chicago Bears, in particular their corners, or excuse me, their defensive backs, and in particular, particular, their safeties, you look at, what was it, 2017, I think Adrian Amos was maybe the best safety in the NFL. Now this year you got Jackson, who was who was easily a top five, if not the top safety in the NFL. Vic Fangio has done a lot of really good things with with the defense as a whole, um, and in growing these guys. But defensive backs and in particular safeties are just absolutely freakish. So we're we're going to get Deontay Thompson out there in Denver. Vic Fangio is going to turn this guy into a superstar. That's all I'm telling you. With the 11th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select. Devin White, linebacker, LSU. So this was relatively simple. Devin White is at the top of our board. Bengals have terrible uh, linebackers. Um, You know, we're we're obviously very hopeful that our new little McVeighite head coach is going to be able to speak to our offense and kind of make some magic happen. That's what a lot of teams are hoping for this year. These these, uh, guys that come from the Shanahan or Reed Trees to be able to kind of continue that magic. Eventually that well's going to dry up, but we're, we're hoping we can get something there. In the meantime, though, this defense needs to tighten up a little bit, and especially at linebacker, and Devin White is easily the best of the group. So at pick 11, Devin White to the Bengals. Next up with the 12th overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, as you remember, traded back from the Green Bay Packers, select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. So first of all, to address the trade, I did a little bit, but it really just came down to either we're going to take Oliver or we're going to trade. We can't leave that much value sitting on the table. I didn't want to take him, so what I decided was we'd move back, we'd get a position of need, which Nikhil Harry is a is a really good pick. A little bit of a reach, but I mean, as far as our need, it fits much better. Beyond that, we get two mid-round guys, which is going to be able to help us quite a bit, whether it's offensive line, whatever. The two mid-round picks is going to help us to get some more bodies in here and, and get some more talent on this team. As far as Harry, it is a little bit early, but our offense needs the help. We could use help at wide receiver, and again, with those mid-round picks, we're going to hit on an offensive line, and we're going to really get this thing turned around. With the 13th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Rashawn Gary, defensive tackle, Michigan. Now, I'll admit I was tempted to take Josh Allen here. He is graded a little bit higher on my board, but I just don't really think he fit. Not saying Josh Allen can't be in a 4-3 system, but you look at the Dolphins in the ends that they have guys like Cameron Wake, and then you put Josh Allen in there, and it's like, which of these does not belong kind of situation. Beyond that, as old as Cameron Wake is, I think they'd be ridiculous not to re-sign that guy. He has not lost a single step, ever. Talk about underrated. I mean, I feel like people just get bored talking about him or something. I remember there was a time when Cameron Wake was like a big deal. And then it was just kind of like nobody really talks about it. He's still awesome, but whatever. Rashawn Gary, super talented guy, unbelievably highly recruited out of high school going into college. He's kind of a tweener, which is where people kind of get a little iffy on him. He's kind of got that uh, Michael Bennett kind of defensive tackle, defensive end kind of thing going on, but super, super talented. Probably going to be a little bit more as a defensive tackle, but in certain uh, certain packages you can put him on the end. But I, in general, I just think he's a much better fit And considering the Miami Dolphins have needs pretty much just everywhere. A guy that is a tweener can be somewhat more beneficial because you can kind of put him where you need him. Kind of like getting a guy like Minka Fitzpatrick last year when you need corner and safety help. It's like, awesome. Let's just put him where we need him then. But uh, 6'4", 281, much, much bigger guy. Again, looking at him, looking at him as an end, he doesn't exactly wow you. I don't think he's ever going to be a 10-sack guy, even if he's a, a full-time starter at, on the end. But also at defensive tackle, it's kind of, eh, maybe wish you were a, a hair bigger. But again, extremely athletic, and he belongs on a team like the Dolphins. With the 14th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Josh Allen, edge rusher, Kentucky. So this is one of those times when people just scratch their head and say, dude, you just didn't give Josh Allen to the Dolphins because they're a 4-3 team. But then again, not really. That's not what I said. If you look at the Falcons and the guys that they put on the edge, they've got guys that look a lot more like Josh Allen. They got the smaller guys, the 250, 260-pound guys. Although I definitely like Josh Allen in a 3-4 role a lot more because he's incredibly talented in in coverage as an edge rusher. I mean, just, just across the board. 
And I don't, I don't know if I have a 4-3 system, if I want to put him as a down end and then move him back to outside linebacker. That doesn't really sit well with me. But Falcons really, really need an edge rusher. Josh Allen is an unbelievably talented guy. If I'm Josh Allen, do I want to go to a 4-3 team? Maybe not as much. If I'm the Falcons, do I care what he wants? No. I want a guy that I can put on the end and go get quarterbacks, and that's what he's going to do for us. So guess what? Josh Allen to the Falcons. With the 15th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Mississippi. So a lot of the wide receivers in this draft class are going to be a lot of the real big boundary guys. Nikhil Harry is no except, or excuse me, DK Metcalf is no exception. 6'3", 225 pounds. This past year, he only went for uh, 569 yards, but that was in seven games. The real standout here. 26 receptions for 569 yards, which is an average of 21.9 yards per reception. That's a little crazy. His average reception was 22 yards down the field. On average. So, there's that. 2017 was a little bit more human at 16.6, but that's still a pretty solid number. So, not a ton of receptions, but very, 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 very deep receptions. Big go-up-and-get-it guy. As for the Washington Redskins, there's a few things that I'd like to do for them. Uh, We do have to address the quarterback issue at some point. At least I'm assuming we don't have that settled. Redskins fans, let me know. Again, type Redskins and then give me your comment, or at least make sure the word's in there somewhere. Otherwise, I I just can't keep up with the comments. At at first, when a video comes out, I try to interact with them, and then after a while, it's just I get overwhelmed and I get lost. So I use it as a resource, but I can't find it if you don't put the team name in there. But... That's something maybe round two we look at, possibly even wait until next year. One thing I do know for sure, though, is that next year we've got DK Metcalf, maybe upgrade the offensive line a little bit. We get Darius Geis back. This is going to be a different situation. But at some point we've got to do something with these wide receivers because they're just not panning out. I'm just not impressed. They've got a lot of bodies at wide receiver. They've got some high draft picks at wide receiver. they got some young wide receivers, but there's not one in their gigantic list of wide receivers that I can look at and say, well, this guy right here might be something someday. Nothing. Not a one. they got to just get that number one guy, and I think DK Metcalf can be that guy. With the 16th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Ja'Kai Polite, edge rusher, Florida. So Polite kind of just blew up in 2018. Last year, 2017, he played in seven games, only had two sacks. The year before that, uh, nine games, two sacks. This year, 2018, he played all 13 games, had 11 sacks, 19 and a half tackles for a loss, 45 total tackles, four pass deflections. The guy was just absolutely everywhere, just terrorizing everybody. Six foot two, 240 pounds, not a super big guy. But similar to Burns, when I watched him play, he doesn't look that small. He actually looks kind of stocky to me, but it is what it is. Um, Speaking of the comment sections, this pick was largely inspired by a commenter by the name of Gideon. He mentioned that the strength of this Panthers team really starts up front, and there's been very little success, especially along the defensive front, in getting pressure. And when you look at it, Julius Peppers and Addison, um, I wouldn't say they're entirely incompetent, but they're really not great. Beyond that, Julius Peppers, I would assume, is done after this year. I don't know if there's anything official that's been said, but his career is definitely winding down. His talent is winding down. He's, I mean, he's got to be pushing 40 at this point, doesn't he? So, top two guys, the only two guys with any real production are not quite what they were, and Julius Peppers is probably gone very, very soon, if not just already out the door. So, Ja'Kai Polite's going to come in. We're going to try to get back to what it is we do best, and that's just playing good, strong, hard, hard hard-nosed football. With the 17th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills are back on the clock after trading back with the the, uh, Cleveland Browns. And with the 17th overall pick, the Buffalo Bills select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. Now I'm just going to get out in front of this one because I've never picked Noah Fant for anybody ever and not had everybody get mad about it. According to my board, and every board I've ever seen ever, Noah Fant is like a mid-first round guy. He's never not been that all year long. However, every single person that's commenting says that Noah Fant is like a third, fourth round guy. What are you doing? This is a joke. Why would you do this? Look, man, it is what it is. Fact of the matter is, Noah Fant, I have number 15 on my board. This is pick 17. This is a good value for him. Beyond that, my only other real options that are not just a ridiculous reach, um, 
would be either defense, primarily defensive tackle, or Kelvin Harmon. Our defense isn't actually all that bad, especially as far as production. You could say that there's some players in need of help or positions in need of help, but overall the unit's functioning pretty well. But our number one priority has to be supporting our quarterback. Just like everybody else that went out and got these young quarterbacks, he's out on an island. He needs a lot of help. Could have gone the Harmon route, but again, Harmon is a massive reach. He's like 25-ish, something like that, and uh, Fant is 15. Beyond that, another thing that I like to talk about is tight ends and young quarterbacks. Very, very awesome pairing. A lot of times the young guys just need that relief valve. Somebody that's running simpler routes, right? It's just going to sit down in the zone somewhere. He's also just a very big target, so you don't really need to fit it in a tight window 25 yards down the field. You just kind of throw it up real high and let him go get it. But anyways, Noah Fant is going to be a receiver who lines up as a tight end, but he is just a wide receiver. He's also unbelievably athletically gifted. Uh, We'll have to see what happens at the combine, but he's another one that you would expect to I don't know about break records necessarily, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had a couple in his name. Incredibly gifted athlete. Actually, let me let me just read this to you. So he's 6'4", 232 pounds, not a super massive guy. But this comes from the Draft Network. Uh, this is Kyle Krabs who wrote this up. Let me just read the beginning part of his prose here. Noah Fant is the most freakish athletes. I'm guessing that's supposed to say one of. Kyle, you might want to edit that dude. He's one of the most freakish athletes in all of college football, reported 42 and a half inch vertical from spring camp, which would top scores out of the 2018 NFL Combine. He's an unbelievable blend of size and speed, graceful in the open field, and will be a mismatch nightmare for safeties and linebackers across the league. Big playability, 16.5 yards per catch, blah, blah, blah. Going a little bit more in depth because I need you guys to start understanding how good this guy is and stop trashing me for picking fans. I got to take him somewhere, man. I'm not going to let him run deep into the second round just because nobody likes him. Anyways, I like my pick. My mom said it was a good pick. (laughs) That's not true. That didn't happen. With the 18th overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings are going to give us our third, I believe, trade of the evening. Obviously, the one really complicated one I forgot to write down in my note. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I lied. We give the Oakland Raiders are going to give up a fourth and a fifth round pick to move up with the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings are trading back to pick 24. This, by the way, is the Raiders pick that they acquired from the Chicago Bears in the Khalil Mack trade, so we're clear on that. So with the 18th pick in the NFL draft, the Oakland Raiders select DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. So the Raiders, not surprisingly because they're the worst in several categories or close to, had one of the worst secondaries in the NFL. We've got a ton of holes, but we got Quinnen, who's going to help us with pass rush. He's going to help against the run. He's right in the center of this defense. Now we're going to go out and get our number one corner. So we're going to add to the pass rush. We're going to get our corner. We're really going to start to turn this defense around. And again, I'm not even going to talk about cars. If I'm Gruden, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to say, Carr's my guy, Carr's my guy, he's my guy. All the while knowing I'm getting rid of Carr probably in 2020, if at all possible. But in the meantime, I'm building as best as I can, and I'm just grabbing talent. I'm trying to get as many studs as I can, and if I believe, as I tend to believe, DeAndre Baker can be a genuinely true number one cornerback in the NFL, I'm trading up now, because as we get into the second half of the first round, you're kind of losing that a little bit. You're getting these kind of starter quality guys, but not really those those kind of elite type of position group guys, and I do think number one corner is an elite position group. So Gruden going to get a little bold and and, uh, move up and get DeAndre Baker out of Georgia. Baker, by the way, 5'11", 180. So again, I talked about uh, the cornerbacks and how their size kind of impacts where they're at. A lot of people think this is easily the best corner in all of college football going into the draft anyways. But because he's 5'11", 180 pounds, nobody wants to look at him. We shall see. With the 19th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Brian Burns, edge rusher, Florida State. So in general, I don't like taking a guy that we just took that position last year. We just took Landry last year in the first round, so it kind of makes me uncomfortable. However, this edge rusher group is not in good shape. The defense overall is solid, which makes me want to go offense, but again, you're really picking and choosing here. But as far as outside linebackers go, Harold Landry is is really, really good in coverage, but as far as his ability to get after the quarterback, he hasn't really developed that yet, at least not in the NFL. 
Arakpo and Morgan are both free agents this year. I don't know who's staying, who's going, or what, but we're, we're kind of in a tough spot here where we don't really have talent. We've got some guys that I don't know if they're coming back or what, what's going on. I, I just think we need to address it again. We'll get Burns in there. We'll have Burns and Landry. We'll make a decision on Arakpo and Morgan. I think Morgan's relatively young, if I'm not mistaken. So that's kind of not even a question. I'm not sure about Arakpo, but regardless... Right, we start we start having these conversations where we have to allocate money to it, and, and when you get a guy in their second contract at a premium position like this, you're talking big money. And because the talent isn't there, I'm looking at it going, I don't want to pay big money for these guys. So you draft Brian Burns, and then you can start having a little more difficult conversations about whether or not we're going to keep these guys. Now, as I mentioned, Brian Burns is a much smaller guy. Uh, the Draft ne- Network has him listed at 6'5", 231. 231 is small, but you figure six foot five, and that's real small. But I'm telling you right now, just go watch the guy play. He racked up 10 sacks in 12 games for Florida State in his junior year this past year, 2018. It's a massive leap from 2017 where he had four and a half. But see, and here's the thing. I didn't know why he wasn't the top guy in the draft because when I watched him play, and I, granted, the more I watched, the more I, I like Josh Allen a little bit more. But just doing a cursory look, this was my top guy, or I guess I should say my number two guy. He might still be, but I I think it's Josh Allen. But still, just go watch him. Don't pay attention to what his weight is. Don't listen to any of that stuff. Just go watch the guy play. If you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on it, just at least watch his highlights just to get a sense of what he does really well. There's no shame in watching highlights, man. I mean, don't give a full analysis of a player based on highlights, but I think that's a good way to start off and kind of get a general feel for what it is they do well. Just go watch what this guy does well. He's very, very impressive. But anyways... Tennessee Titans select Brian Burns with the 19th pick. With the 20th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver, NC State. It's a little bit of a reach, but I think we're going to see that a lot with offensive players because if you want them, you're going to have to reach. You want a defensive tackle? No problem. You'll get a great value guy. You want offense, you might be in trouble a little bit. But here's the the general idea. We've lost Le'Veon Bell we're, we're almost assuredly going to lose Antonio Brown. Juju Smith-Schuster is a solid wide receiver, but he's kind of all we've got right now. Ben Roethlisberger's career is winding down. The defense was decent this past year, but I, I don't really know how much I trust it. We, we just got to get back to it, right? We all know what the Steelers do. This offense can just absolutely rip your face right off. And Juju stepped right in and, and, and took over that sort of mentality. They can rack up a ton of points. You know, the offensive line blocks really well, so even with Le'Veon Bell leaving, you can still have that not quite as good as Le'Veon Bell, but we still got a really solid run game that you have to respect. But at some point, the well dries up. At some point, you just lost too much talent and you just can't make it work. Go check out the Packers if you want to know what I'm talking about. Right? It just, offensive line deteriorates. Wide receivers deteriorating and and leaving. Tight ends. You go out and pay for 75-year-old tight ends. Suddenly, it's Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, and that's it. Doesn't work. So we're, we're going to try to reload a little bit. Kelvin Harmon, another pretty big guy, six foot three, 213 pounds, 1,186 yards on 81 receptions in 12 games, 14.6 yards per reception, seven touchdowns. So very, very talented guy. Um, again, with Juju being on the team, obviously he'd be the number one, which would make Harmon the number two, which kind of takes some of the pressure off. Unlike a lot of these other teams, like the Redskins or whatever, you got to come in and you are the guy. He's coming into a, a team that's, you know, expectations are high, no doubt, but it's not like we've got this young quarterback and you are going to be the savior, right? We need you <laughs> to save the franchise as a wide receiver, which should never be a thing, but is kind of a thing. All right, Jets go out and get a wide receiver. It's like, dude, you better step up in a big way. But anyways, so it is, so it shall be. With the 21st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Montez Sweat, edge rusher, Mississippi State. Now, I'm always going to put this little caveat in here. I personally don't know why Montez Sweat is a first-round candidate. I don't like him. I'm sure he's a great person. I don't like the way he plays. I don't like anything about him. I've never actually seen him play in a way that makes me go, oh, he's really good. If he got drafted in the fourth round, I wouldn't be surprised by it. I literally have no idea what what it is about him that's impressive. Maybe it's just because he's built like one, and that's just kind of what we judge stuff based on. 6'5", 241, 
I mean, the, the guy's stats are solid. It's hard to argue with 12 sacks this year and 10 sacks last year. So he's doing something right, and I probably shouldn't trash my picks right after I make them. It just, it just annoys me, and i got to get that off my chest because I, I just I don't know. But anyways, according to the board, he is easily the best player left. As far as why the pick, obviously everybody's looking offensive line. I get it. I'd like that too. Just not available right now. Beyond that, the Seahawks pass rush, just not really all that fantastic. Talent on the edge is definitely dwindling. To make matters worse, guess how many defensive ends are free agents this year? Five. Some of them are restricted, some unrestricted. I don't really care. Five guys up for free agency, and we already don't have a whole lot of talent on the edge. Again, this is a situation where you've got your strength and you're allowing it to dwindle, right? We, we did that with the Panthers. We need to get back to having the strength on the defensive line. That's what we're doing. Steelers, our offense is dwindling. we got to get back to it. We're going to do that here with the Seahawks. The identity of this team is a dominant defense and then an offense that just has a fantastic quarterback that makes it all kind of come together. But the defense just continues to slowly deteriorate, and we're going to try to get out in front of that and draft Montez Sweat to get on the edge. With a 22nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens are going to give us our fourth and final trade of the evening. The Chiefs are going to offer up a third overall pick to move from 31 to 22. And with the 22nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Mac Wilson, linebacker, Alabama. Now, this is somewhat of a late addition. I actually took Mac Wilson off my board, which, by the way, this is the reason... I get people all the time, you got to take him off, he's not going into the draft, he's not going into the draft. I don't take it off until it's official. Mac Wilson wasn't official, I was like, I'm taking it off anyways. Well, guess who just declared for the draft? Mac Wilson. So he got put back on when I was about a quarter of the way through this draft. Very, very good linebacker, extremely violent, and with the Chiefs' desperate need, um, you look at how bad their run defense was, and then you consider the fact that they've got guys like Chris Jones, Justin Houston, and D. Ford up front, I don't think they should be quite as bad as they are. A lot of that has to do with the fact that their linebackers are just abysmal. They need this. They've got a great team pretty much everywhere across the board. We want to go out and get a real just head-thumping, not literally because that would be a lot of penalties and fines, but just, just a thumping linebacker. Mac Wilson out of Alabama is going to help fill that void. Next up... With the 23rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Greg Little, offensive tackle, Mississippi. Now, usually I like to build up the suspense a little bit or or make it... I mean, this this is... I don't know what else you do here, man. I mean, you can go with a different offensive lineman, I'll grant you that, but I just stuck to the board. This isn't scheme fit. This isn't, you know, the kind of guy that they're looking for. None of that. It's just, who's the best tackle? or offensive lineman, and congratulations, you are now a Texan. Now, we've been at this for a little bit of a while here with guys like Julian Davenport, Martinez Rankin. Been trying to make this work, and it's just not working. I don't know if maybe we need to do something a little different as far as who our offensive line coach is or what we got to do, but we're going to take another swing at it because I would like to have at least one offensive lineman that isn't complete trash. If we can do that, that'd be great. Maybe that's a little harsh, but I mean, there's nobody here that is irreplaceable. Not one. I would love to be able to do something else. I'd love to be able to get another wide receiver on this team. Maybe get a different tight end weapon. Start looking at a different running back or something. You know, Alfred Blue is probably gone after this year. Lamar Miller's okay, but I mean, you know, look to the future a little bit. Deontay Foreman, not good at all. But nope, doing offensive line. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of offensive line throughout the draft. With that said, however, as good as this team can be, as as good as this team has been, if we can just get a serviceable offensive line that can help protect the quarterback and maybe get the run game going a little bit, it's going to be a pretty scary team. But I guess we'll find out. With the 24th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings, who traded back from 18 with the Oakland Raiders, select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume this is not a popular pick. And I want you to bear with me and understand that the board, as it's set up, sort of terrible. The next six guys on my board are five defensive linemen and a slot receiver. Beyond that, though, as awesome as Linval Joseph is, and he is awesome and he's locked up for a real long time, I'm kind of concerned, first of all, we're not going to be able to keep Sheldon Richardson. 
um, with the cap the way that it is, and you know when you sign a guy to a one-year prove-it deal and he kind of proves it, usually it means that they're going to get paid next year. Not super paid because he's getting kind of old, but you're not getting him at a discount. And I'm not really sure the Vikings are in a spot where they can retain. But either way, beyond that, you got Linval Joseph, who's incredible. You've got Sheldon Richardson, who is good. Not sure he's entirely worth the money, but he's good. But even if we retain him, that's kind of it. And it's not going to be the worst thing in the world to try to maintain what it is that really got us to where we're at. As good as the offense has been and has proven to be, especially last year, last meaning 2017, this is a team that needs to embrace their identity, right? Look at the Chicago Bears in the same division. Chicago Bears, for how many years, did everything they could to try to make this a, a formidable offense, bringing in all these, you know, head coaching, you know, offensive gurus, quarterback gurus, you know, Tressman and Adam Gase, all these different guys. And what was it that finally got the Bears back to where they're at? It's defense, man. The Bears are always going to be the Bears. Monsters of the Midway, that's just their identity. It's in their blood. It's in their DNA. It's the same with the Vikings. Purple people leaders, man. You've got a lot of talent on offense, but don't don't get caught up in we need to have, you know, we need to be the Chiefs or sticking with the division. we got to be the Packers, right? All offense, no defense. Don't do that. Keep feeding the machine. The machine is your defense, primarily your defensive front. Christian Wilkins is easily the best player left on our board. Fantastic football player, and he's going to terrorize the NFL for a very long time, especially being next to Linval Joseph. Beyond that, it gives you the opportunity, if you so choose, to move on with Sheldon Richardson or from Sheldon Richardson and use that money elsewhere. With the 25th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select A.J. Brown, wide receiver, Mississippi. Mississippi. I know you've got Golden Tate. I understand that he's been a really good addition to the team. I get all that. I don't think Golden Tate is a long-term solution, and if anything, what Golden Tate has proven is how valuable that slot position is and how important it is that we take that seriously, which is exactly what A.J. Brown does. He's a slot receiver. He's very big. He's like 6'1", 225, I think, but he's a slot guy. Beyond that, the Eagles and their success is largely attributed to There's a lot of things, good coaches, all this different stuff, but they went balls to the wall in free agency, went out and got a bunch of guys, stacked up the defense, went all in, and it paid off. But now that's sort of coming home to roost a little bit. The salary cap is not super fantastic for you guys next year. I know dumping foals is going to help out a little bit, but if you even even at, even at dumping foals, if you sign Golden Tate to a long-term deal, you're, you're kind of bringing yourself down to zero. It's just not worth it to me. I'm sure there's other ways you can manage money. I mean, you can make it work. There's no question about it. It's just not worth it, man. You've got a good team. Keep the things that are core pieces. Don't overpay for a guy like Golden Tate. Don't pay $10 million to a a 30-year-old, whatever he is, wide receiver. Just draft A.J. Brown. Let Golden Tate walk and go somewhere else. Let someone else overpay for him. Use your money to retain your core pieces. Go right back into the playoffs next year. With the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Marquise Brown, wide receiver, Oklahoma, also known as Hollywood Brown. So a lot of people think Hollywood is best wide receiver, all this stuff. According to the board, and again, you can go look at it right now. I mean, depending on when you're watching this, I'm planning on updating it sometime soon. But he, he although he's moving up, he's a second round guy on my board, I think. Late first, early second, I don't exactly remember. I suppose I could look. Okay, so he's at 32 right now. Now, he's flying up the board like no other. Uh, Doing the last update, he moved up seven spots. So he's probably going to overtake a lot of people. However, here's the thing. At this point, it's a reach, but I kind of like it anyways. Right now, the Colts are a really talented but also balanced team. Now, there's other needs I could have taken. There's other players at positions of need that I could have taken ahead of Marquise Brown. But because the offense and defense are so ridiculously good right now, you, you've got the quarterback, you've got a good offensive line, you've got a good running back, you have a good wide receiver, you have a, a solid defense that just kind of came out of nowhere. This is almost what you would call a luxury pick because I don't really care, but this is also one of those things that can just take you to that next level. Sometimes when you get to that point, it's like 
you can add stuff, but it's just sort of a small upgrade. This can completely change the dynamic of the team, in my opinion. If we're able to maintain, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a big Colts guy, so I haven't really broke down or understood exactly what happened. I mean, Frank Reich, obviously, really good coach and whatnot. But there's always concern of the team regressing. But if they can bring that same team, whether it's the, the same players, the same attitude, the same you know drive, whatever, that same level of talent into 2019, but just add a guy like Hollywood Brown, we're talking about that defense with Andrew Luck, T.Y. Hilton, a really good offensive line, Mack at running back, and now Hollywood Brown just running wild. <sighs> Sometimes when I'm making picks, I just I, it's one of those things where I just make a pick and say, oh no, <laughs> oh no, don't do that. This is an oh no pick. For every other fan base in the NFL, this is an oh no pick. We've got enough to deal with trying to trying to figure out how to stop that team and score on that defense, etc., etc. I don't need Hollywood Brown on that team, man. But right now I'm the Colts GM, and guess what I just did? I went and got Hollywood Brown. With the 27th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Zach Allen, edge rusher, Boston College. So this is the pick that we acquired uh, by trading Amari Cooper to the Dallas Cowboys. It's been three straight defensive players for the Raiders. As a recap now, that's Quinn and Williams, DeAndre Baker, the corner out of Georgia, and now we go edge Zach Allen. As far as I'm concerned with the Raiders, though, we have a lot of we have needs across the board. So I just want good players, and I want the board to just give me what it can give me. This is a very strong defensive class, especially defensive line. I walked out with two defensive linemen and a cornerback. I'm pretty excited about that. We've now got Quinn and Williams and Zach Allen up front. DeAndre Baker is our number one cornerback. Still not going to be a very good team, if I had to guess. We still have some decent amount of money in the salary cap. We have a bunch of picks left. Hopefully start feeding that uh, offense a little bit. Hoping to be a little bit improved, but um, I, I think this is just a lot of a lot of really good building blocks. And these are all key ple- pieces. I mean, defensive tackle, maybe not so much, but when you get a guy of Quinnen's caliber, we're talking about an important position, but also we're talking about a pass rusher, a disruptor, and that's really, really important. Of course, we got a pass rusher. we got a number one corner as far as defense is concerned. I mean, maybe the top three most important positions. With the 28th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select Jerry Tillery, defensive tackle, Notre Dame. So right off the bat, let me just say, I don't, like like I've said, I'm not a scout. I don't usually do that, but I still like to watch and formulate, formulate my own opinions, and I'm really far behind on that because I spend so much time making videos, Packers podcast, draft website, full-time job, family, the whole nine yards. Excuses, basically. Um, but I have started looking at defensive tackle, and I got to tell you, when I first looked at Jerry Tillery, I was like, why is this guy a first-round pick? And then I started watching everybody a little bit more thoroughly. I really like Jerry Tillery a lot. I mean, obviously, he's not Quinn and Williams or anything, but I, I, I like him. He's a really solid player. I'd be happy to have him on our team. There's a lot of other guys that I'm watching. I just don't get it. But Jerry, I get it, man. Another guy I really like, just as a side note, Rennell Wren. The guy has just never lost a rep in his life. <laughs> it's just, I, I mean, I don't know that the production is there. I know I'm getting sidetracked, but just go watch him. Go look him up on NFL Big Board. Go check him out. There has never been a snap where that man didn't blow the offensive lineman back two yards minimum. Anyways, at this particular pick, there was just a massive pile of defensive tackles because it's starting to bottleneck because that's just what there's a lot of, and there's only so many teams that are even going to consider taking a defensive tackle, so they start to pile up. Fortunately, the Chargers are a team that could actually really use one, and they're getting a really good one in Jerry Tillery. You got three guys, Phelan, Meebane, and Square are free agents. None of those guys are really studs right now. Meebane is uh, going to be 34 years old. And, you know, considering the talent you've got on the outside and in a lot of other positions, really fortifying that defensive tackle spot is going to be kind of important because that's the middle of the defense is kind of soft right now. So I think it's good. This is a good draft, especially if you're at the back of the first round and what you need is a defensive tackle. They're, they're just going to fall right into your lap. Jerry, by the way, I have 22nd overall, and this is pick 28, so incredible value. Six foot five, 306 pounds, seven sacks in 2018, eight and a half tackles for a loss, 28 total tackles. So pretty disruptive. I mean, just, just the fact that he had 28 tackles and eight and a half of them were tackles for a loss is kind of crazy. Seems like a ridiculously high, <laughs> ridiculously high percentage of my tackles. 
Basically, I just live behind your line of scrimmage. But anyways, Jerry Tillery to the Chargers. With the 29th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. So this one's probably the biggest reach of all. Anytime I take a wide receiver or any offensive skill position, it's pretty much a reach. If I don't take a defensive tackle, it's a reach. But this one's really, really big. The way I see it, though, there's rumors that Gronk is going to be gone. I know those rumors have been around since forever, but it's starting to seem a little bit more real this time, even though I say that pretty much every year. Kind of like how we talk about the Patriots are not good this year, and we say we say that every year, but this time it looks different. And then they, you know, go to the Super Bowl again. But the Gronk talk is there. Hogan, Patterson, Dorsett are all free agents. Slater and Edelman are free agents in 2020. I mean, it's, it, again, at some point the well just runs dry. And, and we've seen Brady do some incredible stuff with some terrible wide receivers. One of these days I'm going to go back and find... Maybe I'll just do it right now. No, I'm not going to do it right now. But I, I specifically remember one year in particular in which he didn't have a wide receiver that I knew prior to that year. They were so bad, and all of a sudden, they were kind of good. Because Brady just kind of makes magic happen. With that said, though, that's just not a good strategy. Just just give the guy some weapons. I mean, I know Belichick is going to figure out a way to make it work either way. He's going to manufacture a really good defense. He's going to get guys that give 150%. But I don't think it's going to kill you to go out and get a really talented wide receiver. And that's what J.J. Arcega-Whiteside is, wide receiver out of Stanford. J.J., by the way, another big-bodied guy, six two, 222. 222 pounds, excuse me. That's a whole lot of man. With the 30th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the LA Rams select Devin Bush, linebacker, Michigan. So I got to be honest, I'm starting to wonder if linebackers are even necessary for NFL football teams. Because I'm watching the Rams, and they're a really good football team, and they don't have a single good linebacker on their entire team. Not inside, not outside, nothing. But uh, Devin Bush is a, a really smart football player, 5'11", 222 pounds. Uh, 2018, he had 66 tackles, 8.5 tackles for a loss, 4.5 sacks. You know, it's it's one of those situations where I don't know that I make this pick for a lot of other teams, but given the fact that the Rams have so much talent already, offensively, defensively, etc., I want to be able to attack one of the weak spots on the roster, even if it's a lesser important position, and even if Devin isn't maybe my favorite player or favorite pick at this spot, overall, it just makes sense for the Rams. So, I mean, again, as talented as the Rams are, there aren't too many players I can take right now that I can say definitively are going to be day one starters. I can say with relative confidence that Devin Bush Jr. out of Michigan is going to be a day one starter for the Rams. With the 31st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens, who traded back with the Chiefs from the 22nd pick, select Debo Samuel, wide receiver, South Carolina. So the good thing about this pick is we still end up getting a position of need at wide receiver. In addition, we get an additional third-round pick from the Chiefs, which is going to be pretty beneficial because I'm going to do everything I can to try to help Lamar Jackson, our quarterback. We've got a stout defense, but I need to make sure that we can get a good amount of wide receivers, offensive line, you know, I don't know that we necessarily need a running back, but whatever it takes to make sure that we can utilize his talents and not really ask him to do stuff that he's not really capable of doing. Because I do think, at at least at this point, he's a pretty limited quarterback. I know that's a very heated topic. You're not allowed to say that. Some people say he's complete trash. Other people say you pretty much have to call him the greatest quarterback ever or they're going to be very mad at you. But let's just say that, I mean, come on, man. It wasn't great. (laughs) I mean, have you ever seen negative passing yards in the fourth quarter? There's a lot to work with, but it's very, very raw, and we've got to make sure that we can protect him, we can get him some weapons, some talent, and kind of work on developing him a little bit because he's he's, he's a work in progress. So Debo's not... You know, the the biggest guy necessarily, five foot eleven, two fifteen, but just, just a good football player. Again, probably a little underrated, you know, not that I've watched him a ton, but just based on his physical attributes, you see guys like Nikhil Harry and, and that kind of thing where you just stand next to him and go, I want that guy on my team. Debo's just gonna be a good, solid, reliable target for Lamar Jackson, and I think that's gonna be a good fit for uh for what they, they need at this point in time. And again, we we can get more guys later. We got some other rounds we got an additional third um but it's a good football team and again it, you know for all the negatives that Lamar Jackson has if we can develop him 
there's not a lot of quarterbacks that have the kind of ceiling that he has. The guy's got a, a, a cannon for an arm, obviously ridiculously fast, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Kind of like a lot of other teams, the Bears, the Jets, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The, the ceiling for the team is going to be kind of limited by what our ceiling is for our quarterback, and we've got to do what we can to protect, get some weapons, and develop these guys. Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Dalton Risner, offensive tackle, Kansas State. So, as a Packer fan, I can tell you definitively, not a lot of people loving my picks today. <laughs> but if you were to take a poll, Packer fans, I would say probably 50% want two edge rushers. Another 25% want an edge rusher and or a wide receiver, and 100% want at least one edge rusher out of the first round. I went and got a defensive tackle and an offensive tackle. But it is what it is. We got a, you know, the, the second highest player on our entire board at pick seven by trading up, and we didn't even have to give up our other first round pick. So that's pretty awesome. He's also going to be a pass rusher, which is awesome. Dalton Risner isn't going to be a, the kind of pick that too many people are going to jump up and down about, but I think it's an important thing. The Packers offensive line, like a lot of other picks that I've been talking about, it's it's something that's eroding. Packers had a great offensive line when it was Bakhtiari and Sitton and Lindsley and Lang and Balaga. I mean, that was a phenomenal offensive line. The two guards are gone. Balaga's in the last year of his contract, and he's always hurt, and there is zero depth behind anybody. When these tackles go, go down, it's a nightmare. So we got to start looking to the future, and if you want to get an offensive tackle, you pretty much have to invest it in the first round. This is going to give us some options. We can, we can move on from Brian Balaga, open up some extra cap space, and, and have some fun with that. Or we keep Balaga on, we develop Risner, we have him as a backup in the event that you know either Balaga or Bakhtiari goes down. And then after this year, we let Balaga walk, Dalton Risner steps in, we don't lose a single step. Either way, again... Not a super exciting pick, but it's, I think, the necessary pick. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up. Like I said, be sure to check out NFLBigBoard.com. It would be greatly appreciated if you would help support what I'm doing here. Uh, check out below. There should be some links for uh, for ways to support. Uh, also, a uh, Facebook group for all the Packer fans in the group. Be sure to check out PackerNet Podcast. I literally do seven days a week, about 45 minutes to an hour every single day. So, pretty busy. But uh, I'm working hard to try to produce a lot of really good content. I'm really trying to make these mock drafts really... It's, it's not just off the cuff, man. There's a lot that goes into this, analyzing rosters, analyzing contracts. You know, not just this year, but next year. Looking at injuries, looking at ages, looking at all different kinds of stuff. And, and putting a lot of, stressing a lot into each and every pick. And of course, as I said, be sure to leave a comment. I definitely want you to, whether you like the pick or not. Even if it's not even about the pick, just just give me your insights about your team. Again, type in the team name, give me your thoughts, because I'm going to in the next mock draft. And I'm also doing seven-round mocks for individual teams. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to try to find comments. And there's a ton of teams on here. There's zero comments. And if there are, you didn't put the name in there, and I just can't find anything. And it's like, all right, I guess I'm winging it. So as much detail and as much as you can tell me, um, you know, as much work as I put in, I still miss stuff. So uh, anyways... Much appreciated. Have yourselves a great week, and I'll be back hopefully sooner than later. Have a great one. Bye-bye.